Hi, I'm Dr. John Preston. I'm on the faculty of Alliant International University and on the faculty also of their postdoctoral master's degree program in clinical psychopharmacology in San Francisco. And I'd like to speak with you briefly about an interesting article that came out in this month's edition of New Science Magazine reporting on the topic of internet addiction and more specifically uh, behavioral problems associated with people becoming obsessively preoccupied with online video games. It's unclear whether this is a true addictive disorder. There are many characteristics that are more similar to what uh, in the diagnostic manual would be called impulse control disorders, but there are some striking similarities in terms of behaviors and symptoms uh, seen between so-called internet addiction and the more classic addictive disorders. These include uh, this preoccupation with seeking out an excessive involvement in an activity that clearly has negative impact on the individual person, especially in terms of relationships, their ability to work, and their ability to succeed at school. There also are health consequences. Oftentimes people who become very preoccupied with this uh, consume large amounts of caffeine or energy drinks, stay up late, have impaired sleep, and they have some health problems that are secondary to that. Secondly is craving, which people will describe as, again, remarkably similar to what you hear uh, people that are addicted to drugs. And finally are withdrawal symptoms. There are a couple of clinics in the UK where they are actually treating uh, this particular kind of behavioral problem and they do report that uh, many individuals when they have uh, abruptly discontinued video games experience depression, they may experience irritability, uh, sometimes agitation, occasionally aggression. Another interesting feature that was talked about in the article study done at the University of Utah where they did brain imaging with individuals who had this uh, behavioral problem and when they were uh, doing the metabolic brain scans, they would show them pictures from the video games and you would see certain parts of the brain become metabolically hot, light up and get active. And these parts of the brain are similar to parts of the brain that are active uh, in people that are addicted to drugs. Very interesting though is then they treated these individuals with Welbutrin. Welbutrin is an antidepressant and it's a unique antidepressant in terms of its effect on increasing the availability of norepinephrine and dopamine and dopamine is well known to be the neurotransmitter primarily responsible for reward in the brain and underlies almost all addictive disorders. What they found after six weeks of treatment were not only did the people uh, describe significant decrease in craving but then also when they did a reevaluation with metabolic brain scans they found that the, the brain metabolism uh, had normalized after treatment with Wellbutrin. I think that you know what, what's unclear is, is the underlying neurobiology. The research on this is very limited. On the other hand, what is very clear is this is an increasing problem in our culture, and it's not just with kids and, and with teenagers. Increasing numbers of adults are becoming involved with internet gaming and paying a heavy price in terms of dysfunction, in, especially in relationships, but also at work. There's a concept called screen time. And screen time is the amount of time the individuals spend in front of a screen, like you are right now watching me uh, on this YouTube uh, presentation, uh, but also television, uh, video games, texting, and so forth. And a number of pediatric groups have suggested that uh, screen time exceeding more than two hours a day it, it can be very detrimental for children and adolescents, primarily in terms of the fact that it starts taking up large amounts of their life. And what are they not doing? because they're sitting in front of a screen. They're not making friends. They're not developing social skills. They're not involved in extracurricular activities like sports, music, and dance, and so forth. So even though the, the issue of whether this is a true addiction or not is yet to be resolved, I think very clearly this is a problem that has significant implications for quality of life, and especially quality of life, and maturation and development of our children. Okay, thanks for listening.